Why, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, the Caporal, bringing you a review on the movie Hang 'em High, starring Clint Eastwood. Is this a. Um... Oh, it's an MGM. I keep thinking it was Universal. But yep, MGM film, PG 13. Why is this on 13? Was it copyrighted on a certain day? It also takes place in 1873. I didn't know that. Huh. It's just kind of weird, like, when the... With his westerns, like, when they take place. Because, like, I'm pretty sure in, um... What was it? Unforgiven. Which is the next movie review. It takes place in, like, 1890. And that's supposed to be the end of the west, but it's not. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing this, research for my book. Buy my book, The Epic of Cassius Crossroads at authorhouse.com and barnesandnoble.com. Um, I'm pretty much about to start three. I'm just working on the art for two. So, I'm going to kind of get that out of the way. But it's time consuming. And I hate drawing. Probably should have just hired somebody, but... You know, but I'm I'm dirt cheap, so and they don't get my vi vision. It's literally like the how Star Wars was like. Hey, we're gonna have this guy in a costume that looks like Bigfoot. Call him a Wookiee, and it's gonna just speak in noises. Just freaking cast the crew was like, oh god, this movie's gonna fail. Produced like, oh god, this movie's gonna fail. Let's just give it everything to George. Let him get everything, and bam, succeeded. Also, I'm wearing the balaclava, so my lips barely move. So anyway, so hang them high. So, this one, uh, I got this movie because, oh, in the background, Columbo's playing. Uh, I forgot to turn off the TV, but, you know, I probably should do that. I'm going to pause. I'm, I'm back, baby. So. I got this because supposedly this movie is actually a prequel to either Pell Rider or High Plains Drifter. But it's part of a trilogy of like... It's an Eastwood trilogy. I just don't remember the name of the trilogy. But it's supposed to be of like guys returning from the grave. Ooh, spooky. And only one of them is kind of confirmed that Eastwood is a ghost. So yeah, and I can understand this one being the prequel to um, um which one is it? Pale Rider. But in Pale Rider, it, there's a bit of a um discrepancy because there are marshals in there, and in this movie he's a marshal, so. Yeah, so it might be more of a prequel to High Plains Drifter, even though there's like no relevant, there's no like similarity to it whatsoever. Like in, like he doesn't use like the same gun or anything like that. It's just um, it's a stretch. They're part of the same trilogy and all that. So that's really what it is. And so the synopsis of this movie, Eastwood. Freaking, what's his name? I keep forgetting his because I see him in Eastwood. Jed Cooper. So, what he does, he just is minding his cattle, and a posse rolls up and they hang him. Okay, they think he killed a a rancher and stole his cattle. And so they're just, it's just a, um, can I say that the, it's a mob? Well, if people don't know, it's like, it's always a race issue with that kind of type of mob and everything. But people don't know, like, a lot of these guys, like, just cattle rustlers were, were attacked by these mobs. And I think that legend of the Texas Ranger comes from that. But yeah, it's always conflated with like a race thing. Like, now this thing is like was very common in the Wild West because there's no law. Like in some places, literally was no law because it's Indian territory. A little bit of a history lesson there. And if you make law 
in the Indian Territory, and they're probably going to send the soldiers out to get you. That's why Deadwood was like the way it was. Because, no, no, you're essentially making your own country. But eventually, like, all that stuff became part of America, so it was like, okay, good, now have law. So this is an example of that, because each one's the marshal, he's going and collecting um, bounties, essentially. And so with that, but anyway, um, so he gets hanged, but he's saved by a guy who is transferring prisoners, but he, the guy thinks like, oh, this guy's just a freaking outlaw, puts him in the cage with everybody else, and they put him in the prison, and the judge knows Eastwood, and so he get, that's him out after a, little, a, a day. He's like, hey, get the marshal and all that. We need a marshal. There you go. The movie is him essentially just going and doing random jobs. He's not like hunting the guys he's looking for. The first guy he run in he runs into, I think it was by by accident, was it? Like he came for a different guy entirely, and then he found one of the guys he was looking for. I, be I believe that was how it went. And then he went after three other guys. But he was he even had his own posse to go after the main guys. And he and so it's just really that. He's just going around different places trying to just getting different guys. And then he has like a little bit of um you have a scene where there's a six man hanging. You know, it's a big show, big crowd and everything. For the people who get caramel corn and all that. Because and that's the main reason why I like I was using this movie as research, because oh, six guys. That means they all did something. That means I can use them all. Those crimes from my furry trio, which I need a name. And you've got some suggestions for a trio of bad guys who all happen to be furries. No, I keep saying furry. They're based off three furries I had, I ran in, I met, I ran into one time. But it's going to be all do two dogs and a cat. So, well, it's not a cat, it's a red panda, but I don't have red panda people in my book. I do have cat people in my book. So, if you guys could think of a trio of this, these dastardly outlaws, then please tell me. But anyway, it's the, okay, six crimes. And it's like, oh no, they don't even state the crimes. It's actually kind of taking more of a joke. Like, it is a serious moment, but it's like, one guy's like, gets his last request, like, hey, give me some tobacco. Like, chewing tobacco. And he's like, okay, pulls out the little... Stick a chewing tobacco, lets him have it and everything. And he's like, hey, put it in my pocket. It's like, okay, fine. He's like, get it hanged. Okay, so then it's like, then there's this other guy who's doing like this poem or speech and everything about don't drink alcohol. And then you got this other guy just hurry up with it and everything. And it kind of makes sense that these guys really don't care. Because it's like, they literally say like, oh, the outlaws in this area, they'll just that kill you. Just take your hat. So yeah. So we. So I was like, oh, disappointed. So all I got is really for a crime. It's just this mo cattle rustling, or me or a mob and everything. I think I could say that word. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I could say it. But anyway, so. So yeah, it's just it's a very minor thing, and I'm like, well, not minor, but it's like, okay, I could use the cattle rustling and all that. Can't, I could use the guy like getting drunk and getting handsy with a woman, okay? I could use those two. So it's, it wasn't a waste of time. But what I think the movie overall, it feels cheap. It feels very, um, like I'm watching... Like one of those fantasy films, like The Voyage of Sinbad, it felt very cheap. The acting wasn't bad though. Neat trivia the judge in this movie is the police chief in the fourth Dirty Harry movie. And that guy also has been in Colombo too, so he's been like a police chief in London. So I was like, oh wow, it's that guy. And I'm like, okay. But anyway, so. The acting was pretty decent, but it's very much like it kind of felt very improbable. Like I wouldn't see East like he's half dead when they find him. They should have just given put him out the doctor. 
And then immediately he's expected to go do this job and everything. And then it's like, and then he's like, he's very devoted, devoted for the job. Everybody's like, hey, we should, um, we should get rid of these guys. He's like, no, 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 we'll follow the law and everything. Then nobody wants to go with him because it's like, I disagree. But it's like, you're going to get the justice. And then it's like the judge was a jerk too. Essentially, two innocent guys. Well, they weren't innocent, but yeah, they got dragged along. And it's very much um, I get what's going on. Is like the law is tough, especially in the Wild West. But there's like a big lull in the middle of the movie where Eastwood has a love interest because something happens. I'm not gonna say it, and that could be the thing that ties it into um pale uh, into pale rider but something happens and it comes off as like it's just a big lull he has to have um a love interest and of course like in every single eastern movie the woman has gone through the same type of suffering like oh god it's like every single one if you notice this is a trend it was in Gran Torino as well It's like, yeah. And I want to say, like... Uh, I didn't... I don't hate it. I want... Like, um, with... What's the previous one? Oh, I completely forgot. I don't forget. I just had it in my head. So I've been forgetful lately. And my age is showing. Um, previous one wasn't high... Was um, Joe Kid. Oh, it wasn't in Joe Kid, but anyway, um, that movie looked a little bit more polished. I got off track. Give me a second, people. I'm sorry. I usually have like a little note card I keep with me. Go through the points. But I don't have it this time. I'm kind of unheard because of my schedule. But yeah, so... Um, yeah, he has to have the love interest. So he always gets the same crime and all that. So yeah, there's that big lull. And... I didn't like it. And that's what kills the movie for me. Because the other one was like... Okay, yeah, I'm watching this all the way through. This one was like... Ugh... Rewatching and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about this. It's like this movie's kind of cool, but it's not really gunfighting too. Not a lot of that. And then the final act, you do get kind of like a little bit of a gunfight. And I'm pretty sure Trigun references that gunfight. But it's not that big of a deal either. It's more of um It is more of a drama. It's more of a very boring. It's not like there is like a, a scene where it's like draw your gun and all that, but that's that was it for a while. And that was the same where like a crazy guy runs off and gets shot in the back. It's like, okay. But it's not a lot of action. It's not an action film. This is more of a just um slow paced kind of it's not slow paced revenge film. With just uh, with, but with this message about outlawed about the Wild West justice system essentially. Just like it's a harsh world. And I like it for that. And even though this one is like not going to help me with my research and all that, I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's like it's less than the other one. I'll give it a a 4 out of 10, which I'm so sad, though, because it's weird that I I don't like this movie as much as I liked Joe Kidd, but I'm more likely going to watch this movie over Joe Kidd. And that's the weird part. But I give it 4 out of 10. Well, thank you all very much, ladies and gentlemen. Next movie review shall be... What should it be? I think it should be Unforgiven. Oh, how about you guys vote on it? Unforgiven or Pale Rider. Okay? Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Death Rides a Horse. That could be a good one. Well, thank you all very much. You all have a nice day.
Just leave your ideas, leave your suggestions and any ideas for the, the name of this villainous trio. Thank you very much. You all have a nice day. Bye-bye.